The last time Vulcan launched was October 2024, which was the second ever flight of the vehicle. In the time since then, we haven't heard much regarding future missions or what to expect. That being said, not long from now, the company is hoping to begin a consistent launch cadence of up to two launches a month. Throughout this year, ULA has been building up a stockpile of core stages, BE-4 engines, solid rocket boosters, and even working on new infrastructure, all to support a rapid increase in the number of Vulcan launches. Here I'll go more in depth into the recent updates from ULA CEO, how many Vulcan vehicles are actually ready, the launch demand, and more. While specific updates on Vulcan have been somewhat slim in recent months, ULA CEO Tori Bruno has been sharing some info on what to expect. Just a few days ago, for example, he posted an image inside the Decatur rocket factory in the final assembly aisle. Here you could see multiple just about complete Vulcan core stages on both sides. He clarified that the left section has been all Vulcans from the start of production, and the right side is now starting to fill with them as well as the Atlas vehicles are phased out. When asked how flight ready these vehicles are, Tori responded with, ready. What's interesting is that despite the Vulcans featured in this image being just about flight ready, they aren't even set to be used for another three missions or so. In other words, in addition to the stages seen, simultaneously in Florida, there are at least three more Vulcans even further ahead, preparing for flight. In terms of the expected launch cadence later this year, the company's hoping to start launching very frequently. When asked if there was a timeline for the next Vulcan launch, Toy responded, yes, busy year, a couple of USG missions after the upcoming second Kuiper Atlas. Then we'll swing back to Kuiper Vulcan and continue back and forth through the end of the year, he said. When he mentions USG missions, he's referring to the United States government or US Space Force missions, set to begin after the next Atlas launch. Currently, that Atlas launch with Kuiper satellites is scheduled to lift off less than a week from now, on June 13th. This suggests that in the next few months, we could begin to see Vulcan start upping its cadence. When asked about providing a specific launch date for Vulcan, Toy responded, soon. Customers will announce launch dates. Even without set dates, it's clear the company is getting ready for a busy schedule. When asked about the current lack of launches and what would lead to a sudden increase in cadence, Toy responded by saying, 2x VIFs, 3x MLPs, 4x SRM production. Current stockpile of 50 units, 3x engine production, 3x vehicle production, expanded and modernized factory. Current stockpile of 15 vehicles, 2x transportation, 3x by Q1, 1 3rd x processing span at Cape, etc. Within this one comment, there's a lot to unpack. The first part highlights the vertical integration facility and mobile launch platforms. The company expects an increase in launch cadence large enough to warrant multiple launch platforms in addition to other core infrastructure upgrades. In a statement, the company said, ULA's second launch processing capability uses a new Vulcan launch platform tailored to support specific mission configurations and to meet demand for a higher launch rate cadence for Amazon's project Kuiper and other commercial customers. Not to mention other infrastructure upgrades, including construction at SLC3 on the west coast to support Vulcan a roof extension at the vertical integration facility, extra ground and communication interfaces, and more. Focusing back on the comment from Tori, he then mentions a stockpile of 50 units for the solid rocket motors or boosters. In the images he provided, you can see lines of these SRMs within a large warehouse. Multiple variants are complete, including GEM 63s as well as 63XLs. He also talked about an increase in engine production alongside vehicle production. Originally, there was some concern related to Blue Origin's ability to keep up with BE-4 demand. This had to do with the fact that not only does ULA need two engines per Vulcan, but Blue Origin also needs seven per New Glenn booster. However, it seems for the most part, they've been able to deliver. When asked about the BE-4 engine delivery, Tori said, we generally mount them to a booster within a few days of each pair coming in. This suggests that the engines could be coming in quicker, but it's not a huge deal. Overall, it seems the hardware is ready, and with that, launches should follow. Vulcan already has tens of missions scheduled, meaning once they start launching again, we could very well see that expected increase in cadence. One of the biggest customers is the US government. Only a few months ago in March, Vulcan was officially certified for NSSL missions. Specifically, they were quoted saying, We have announced the certification of United Launch Alliance's Vulcan launch system for national security space launch missions. ULA is now eligible to launch NSSL missions as one of two certified providers. Vulcan certification is the culmination of several years of effort by the Space Force and ULA, which encompassed 52 certification criteria, including more than 180 discrete tasks, two certification flight demonstrations, 60 payload interface requirement verifications, 18 subsystem design and test reviews, and 114 hardware and software audits. Some of the missions on the manifest include USSF-106, 87, 114, 112, and many more. As soon as next month, we could see the launch of USSF-106. 
In this case, a few weeks ago in May, a report came out related to the Air Force and upcoming launches. Here, they were quoted saying, The first NSSL Vulcan mission is USS F-106, with an ILC date in July 2025. This would mark the return of Vulcan and hopefully the start of consistent launches. All that being said, it's important to highlight that Vulcan should have already been launching much more frequently by now. In that same Air Force statement, they were quoted saying, In NSSL Phase 2, the ULA Vulcan program has performed unsatisfactorily this past year. Major issues with the Vulcan have overshadowed its successful certification, resulting in delays to the launch of four national security missions. Despite the retirement of highly successful Atlas and Delta launch vehicles, the transition to Vulcan has been slow and continues to impact the completion of Space Force mission objectives. They go on to say, to address these challenges, ULA has increased its engineering resources and management focus to resolve design issues. Government and federally funded research and development center personnel have increased involvement in technical and program management challenges. ULA has also lost launch opportunities on the NSSL Phase 3 Lane 1 contract due to not having a certified launch vehicle until April 2025, they said. There was also the launch anomaly on the last Vulcan flight back in October. In that case, ULA flew a mass simulator. Not long into the flight, the nozzle on one of the solid rocket boosters broke off, resulting in a shower of debris in the exhaust plume. While the SRB continued to function for its full 90-second burn, the anomaly led to reduced asymmetrical thrust. This caused the rocket to slightly tilt before the guidance system and main engine successfully corrected and extended the burn by roughly 20 seconds to compensate. Fortunately for the company, despite the anomaly, the rocket achieved nominal orbital insertion, with the Space Force praising the launch and the robustness of the total Vulcan system. Either way, those various issues have held back the program so far this year, something they're hoping to change not too long from now. When Vulcan does eventually begin launching again and ups its cadence, we could begin seeing work to improve the vehicle. For example, the current rocket is fully expendable. However, the company has hinted over time about partial reuse. Yesterday, when asked if ULA was currently designing or prototyping a reusable part of the vehicle, Tori responded by saying yes. In all likelihood, he's referring to Sensible Modular Autonomous Return Technology, or SMART. This is a technology they've been working on for a while now that would involve separating and retrieving the engine section of Vulcan. On an actual mission, after separation, the nose assembly extends to position the hypersonic inflatable aerodynamic decelerator, or HIAD, such that it will clear the separation plane when inflated. Preliminary results indicate a 10 to 12 meter HIAD will be required to recover the booster module. From here, it would continue through Earth's atmosphere before parachute deployment. This would slow down the two BE-4s and additional technology significantly before a planned softwater landing. Here, they would float on an inflatable aeroshell before being recovered by ULA and taken back to land for refurbishment. Back in 2024, Tori was quoted saying, in terms of our engine recovery, that's going to happen within a handful of years. I don't want to say exactly when because it's part of the contract we have with one of our customers at this time, and we're not releasing the details of that. But it will take a couple of years to actually be reusing the engine, he said. Based on these statements, along with even more recent comments, it seems like the company is continuing to work on this technology and actually testing could be relatively soon. Something that would not only save money, but also help increase Vulcan's launch cadence. Even though Vulcan hasn't launched yet in 2025, the company looks like it's only a month or two away from a significant ramp up in cadence. They have quite the stockpile of vehicles and boosters, not to mention infrastructure upgrades happening around the country. We will have to wait and see how it progresses, and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching.